people approaching the Bible and saying, well, this is what it means to me. Mm. Nobody has the right to say that or ask that until they first answer the question, what did the Bible mean to them, the original recipients from the original author? I noticed that you're, you're, you know, at, throughout your teaching, you'll correct misunderstandings or misconceptions that people have about the Bible or what the Bible even is. Like, what would you say are some of the most common misunderstandings that people have about the Bible? Well, uh, <laughs> there are so many. Uh, one of the misunderstandings um, is that the Bible is some kind of a self-help book, mm. a how-to guide. Uh, instead of, you know, you've got narrative, you've got poetry, you've got a, a, a number of different genres of literature um, that convey a message. And uh, people sort of approach it like it's a self-help book. They start out in Genesis and they get through a couple books, maybe, and they quit because it's not what they thought mm. it would be. Uh, another misconception is that the Bible is uh, a myth. That's the biggest misconception. Most people, unbelievers, think it's it's mythical, uh, or at best allegorical, and uh, certainly it has poetic, figurative language. But it's it's to be taken at face value for the most part, unless otherwise indicated. Um, I would say another misconception is that people think because there are so many different ways to interpret the Bible, that no one can really be certain of what the Bible means. Uh, even though we would say that's not right, if you have a per proper her hermeneutic and you interpret things according to a system like you would any other form of literature, you can come up pretty much all the time with the correct interpretation. And then um, lastly, um, sadly, among many professed believers, is the misconception that the Bible is not enough. It's not sufficient, that they need more than what God has revealed. Even though Peter said he's given us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us. So um, those are some of the big ones that I run up against. You know, I've been on sabbatical for the last month or so, and for some reason I just got really into watching documentaries about cults. And so I, I kind of binged watched several of these different documentaries and I'm no expert on cults, but one of the things that really stood out to me that's a common thread among all of these cult documentaries that I watch is this concept of new revelation, this idea that, you know, God is speaking directly through somebody with new information. And um, that kind of goes to your final point there that the Bible is enough, you know, it's sufficient. We don't we don't need uh, somebody to tell us what God is, you know, saying specifically right now. That's a new thing to add to the Bible. And that is the one thing about all these different cults that was uh, in common is somebody would kind of elevate themselves as this sort of person, whatever they might call them. And they were the ones that were the mouthpiece of God and everybody else had to obey what they were saying or else you're disobeying God. And that's what I love about the Bible is we have the authoritative standard of God's word by which to measure everything against. Mm. And so I, I love that you said that. I also want to touch on one of the, the points you just made about the interpretation, because I think that is something that so many people in our audience today are being faced with, whether it's on social media or maybe in their personal relationships where they might be sharing something that the Bible says with a friend. And of course, with the influx of progressivism and other things, they're, they're likely to be told, well, that's just your interpretation. You know, that's your, but I interpret it this way. Help our listeners with, how, how might you respond if somebody were to say that to you? Skip, that's just your interpretation. Uh, I would say um, I would what, what if I have time, what I'd like to do is actually open the text that I referred to up and take them through a quick way to interpret it. Let's look at the context. Let's look at the language, the type of word, the nouns, the verbs, the pronouns and the history and and, and take it at face value like you would any ancient document. And, 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 and ask them some questions. So what do you think this word means? And what do you think the context is? And if I have enough time, I'll do that. And usually people say, oh, I never saw it that way. Hmm. Nobody's really taken the time to show me, or I've never really read the Bible. Most people that say that, that well, it's your interpretation. Um, I will often first say, well, what is your interpretation? Hmm. And then how did you arrive at that interpretation? Uh, tell me your hermeneutic. I wouldn't use that term, but tell me how you 
came up with the idea that it means this? And have you ever considered that Jesus or Paul was talking in this context at that time? And, um, and, and you know, that brings up sort of the issue of people approaching the Bible and saying, well, this is what it means to me. Mm. Nobody has the right to say that or ask that until they first answer the question, what did the Bible mean to them, the original recipients from the original author? Once you come up with that, and there's a way to come up with that by hermeneutical principles, that then you ask what it means to me.